Hello, so we're going to continue our lab over here uh, from where we stopped it. I'm probably going to go over some of the stuff that we've talked about in the class, uh, in the previous class, so feel free to, uh, you know, go over it or skip any one of them that you think we've already done in the past before. So, uh, here I'm going to just uh, go over um, the uh, example 005 will be here. I know we've already gone over that in the class before, so you should be able to see what, we, what we've got over here. Again, we're going to use our XDOM. Now, I've gone over how we use the XDOM. You can use uh, uh, argument C and use V to display the content of what we have in here. And, uh, and if you do that, you can actually pass it into head command. And that will allow us to see what we have as the header, you know, of the file. And if you can take a look at this, but remember uh, that this is a file signature for uh, a zip file. Uh, so you should probably be able to know that. Uh, one of the things that you can also type over here is to use your unzip, uh, unzip dash t and type the exercise and go for so uh, x and if I do that uh, you can see on zip allows me to see that now I'm looking at uh, XML uh, uh, format of uh, office document this is not the uh, Olay the older format remember we mentioned in the class that the uh, previous uh, uh, format which is Olay type of files allows you to view uh, use object link embedded uh, type of format whereas the, the newer format starting from uh, I believe uh, Office 2007 uses uh, XML format. Um, there is a tool here that we can actually use that allows us to uh, view uh, the content of uh, of a zip file, uh, zimtom.py, and I'll go over and to do this. Uh, and if you press enter here, you would be able to see the content of this particular file. You can see that, that they are mostly XML formatted file. Um, one other stuff here that you can also do is you can go over and look into the stream you know of this file by looking into the stream you'll be able to see certain um part of the stream that is of importance to you uh let's see that over here and it's very very simple to say um you could also even go further by going using the dash a Okay. that will allow you to essentially be able to uh, uh, dump and print out uh, the content um, so I can uh, cut this into head now to see the header information again the dash a allows me to see the ASCII you know uh, print out of this particular uh, word document there are additional stuff I can also do you can come over here and use dash e and if I use dash E, it will allow me to see the extra uh, information. You can see that. Allow you to see uh, here. I'm looking at the bytes, the white space, the null, the ASCII, the X information, the magic number, and so on and so forth. And you can see all those information are printed right across the screen over here. It might be a little difficult for you to follow it, uh, but pretty much you can print it out and you can see they are separated uh, oftentimes by semicolon. So, if you start from the beginning over here, uh, you would see that the first thing you have at this end of this command is your index. And then if you look at the beginning of here, you can see that what you have is index. Then after the index, you have the file name. You know, then it tells you you have the file name. You know, then you have the encrypted and, and so on and so forth. You can see everything here is separated by semicolon. If you look at the timestamp here, here you have the timestamp. See that? Semicolon, semicolon. 
and then after that you have the MD5, and then here is the MD5. After MD5, you have file size, and then this tells you the file size. So, um, another thing you could also do, I'm not going to do that here, is you can actually uh, dump the content. And if you dump the content, that will allow you to be able to uh, actually uh, take a look at, uh, uh, dump it right on the uh, on the screen. It's going to be a standard dump, and you're going to see it on the screen. This might mess up your screen. Uh, you might have to open another uh, window. That's why I don't want to... Uh, you know, dump it. Um, also, uh, you can actually try and run uh, a lead dump against this and see uh, if uh, there's a lead dump files here um, in this file. Uh, if you think you, there may be some um, the OLED file format over here, as you can see, there's none over here, and so there's nothing to be viewed. So this is very important for you to kind of like. Uh, take a capture of and uh, remember so we're going to go over now to the uh, the next file that we have here in line which is going to be the ex06 uh, file format um, and generally if I just run my OLED type of files here where's my OLED OLED down As you will see now that I have a list of files now that are zipped. Um, and uh, one of the things we did earlier on for you, if you remember the time I type this command here, that I can easily come over here and view the content of a file by just running them down uh, through this. If I run it through, it's going to go too fast. But if I come back here, I can run them through head command. And by running through them through the screen command, I can see again when you see the PK it tells you that it's a zip file. So the next thing I'm going to do here is to come back here and run the OLE uh, files over here, and then we we'll see this file that shows you you have macro, and uh, you know you could see that this if you want to see the content of it, we can easily come back here and use dash s. Uh, seven for the space here. Okay. Remember the key important thing here that the names here tells you have a micro VBA module one. Then this is micro VBA, uh, this document. All right. So we can see it over here that, uh, this code contain, uh, let's take a look at, uh, this one here. Uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, one other stuff that you can also, uh, you know, still do if you want to kind of just view it you can go dash over here into dash uh, v and you can see here that these codes are attributes they, they actually do not have any particular code uh, containing them another thing you can go ahead and take a look at is you can look at uh, the second one, which is uh, on the string number eight, and you can see that essentially these are just attributes of the code. They do not actually contain uh, any particular uh, uh, visual basic, uh, you know, uh, code. So let's go ahead and take a look at. Uh, um, actually, let me go back here a little bit and uh, let's take a look at uh, where we have here now. So we'll look at this one, but we're going to go ahead and look at uh, the number seven, uh, just to kind of uh, view the content of what we have here. And here, I'm going to just uh, change this back, and change this to seven, and press enter, and right. All right. So one of the things uh, we've just seen over here is if you look at this particular file there is uh, a little bit of a difference between what we've had here and what we've looked at in the past in the sense that this file has a capital M uh, uppercase M letter M and this one is lowercase um, M uh, it's very very important for you to kind of quickly take a look at that the reason that is uh, uh, important is for you to be able to see the difference between them 
uh, they they look alike but they are not actually alike one of the things that you want to take a note of is the uppercase tells you the actual VB code and the lowercase tells you the uh, this is just an attribute of the VB code we will take a look at uh, uh, the streams here and quickly look at what it is that we have here um, I can go to 7 and I'll pop it into head if I just want to see the code itself I can simply just take a look at it and I can see this is a subroutine that when the user open up these uh, a document, uh, a low bar, a low world will be displayed on the message. Uh, you can look at the header of this information here. Uh, let me just pass this through into right here. And you can see here most of this is not a, a non printable uh, a character. Well, here you could see the content of the message. It's very important for you to be able to see the difference uh, between them. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the next message here. The next file, that's number 8. I'm going to run them through the same process again. And here we have something similar uh, to what we've had before. And again, let's uh, pass uh, document and go to 8 here. And if you look at this, the difference between this and this is here we're using auto open our, you know, command. This is kind of a Windows uh, subroutine with a function, auto open function, which means when the user opens this document, this document we automatically open uh, without the user uh, uh, being prompt or anything at all. So you should be getting familiar with all these uh, uh, functions now, whereas this is just a, a regular demo function, you know, this thing would, uh, would not automatically open or run the microcode. Uh, if you want to take a look at the other uh, uh, streams here, we can take a look at it and you can see essentially it's just an attribute, whereas this one here is an actual uh, code. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, nine exercise here. As you can see here, we have something that looks a little bit uh, similar. Uh, one of the things you're looking at here, let's take a look at the, at the string here. And we're going to be looking at 7, where we know we actually have the actual VB code. We can make it as V, so we could take a look at what is in there. Uh, again, just in case you might be wondering this uh, what is all this you know when you see this SRP underscore zero underscore one and so on that means this code had actually run before and after the code was executed the micro code this file was saved uh, there's really no other more value to it at this point in terms of forensic but one thing you want to note is if you see this, the difference between what you have here and what we have here is this code has not been run before the file was saved, whereas this code had actually been executed after that the file was saved. Another thing you should also see over here is when you look at these, these are just a simple files here, whereas when you look at it, this is a macros directory, and then you have a project inside a macros directory. Look at this one here. This is a macros directory. You have a, a VBA folder inside the macros directory. And then you have a file called module 1 uh, inside uh, 
you know this file so it's important to uh, to be uh, somewhat familiar with that especially when you are uh, looking at uh, you know some of the files you can actually look at any of these files here for example uh, I can check this uh, stream and dump what is inside the uh, stream I can go to 10 over here uh, and if you go I'll see if you set me one second here. I think I pressed the wrong key here. Again, you can see the difference between uh, this code and this code is simply because this one has been opened, you know, and then the code executed, and then the file was saved. Whereas this place, the code has not been executed uh, before the file was saved. Uh, just so something you want to take note of. Uh, it's very easy to kind of uh, look at what is inside the code. For example, I can type dash s over here and uh, go to uh, 10. Uh, generally, what I will be doing if I wanted to do that would be essentially to go through part of what I have, um, you know, at the top of the code. You can easily uh, run these uh, by piping it into here. I ran this earlier on and uh, my system doesn't like it for some reason. And look at the content of this file here. So um, again, there is really not a big value to it forensically at this point. Alright, so we're going to move on to uh, another file here on the list of what we have here which is uh, 10. Then let's take a look at what we have in 10 here. Essentially, what we have in 10 here is another code here, and then this is the attribute of the code. Let's take a quick look at what is in the stream. So dash s, and I'm gonna look for a seven stream. I'm gonna make it the with the balls. And over here, what I have here is auto open message you know hello world it looks as if we've seen uh, this file before if you remember when we're talking about the auto open it's very very important to realize that there is certain things I want you guys to take note of it is important for you to realize that this document is actually passworded with a password call infected uh, but because this code is able to read that without uh, the password uh, you are not prompted if you actually open this file in a word document you will be prompted for a password to to view and actually to modify you know, modify the code all right so we're going to proceed to the next uh, file here 11 And uh, one of the things we're going to look at is uh, take a look at the content here. Go back here. Okay, it looks like this file is the same thing, but before we do that, we can look at a zip dump here. Sure, I have my zip dump file available here. Zip dump the file, yeah, yes, we have it here. So I've got my zip dump the file here, and I'm going to look at this file. And if you look at this, you're going to see a series of or files, uh, but there is this particular binary files that you want to look at. You know, there's a binary file, and sometimes you want to take additional extra look of this file because it is possible to have a binary file which is the older format of uh, Office uh, document or lay or lay file, 
embedded inside um, you know a, a word document an XML word document and when you do that then you will run just like any other uh, office uh, that is uh, the OLEF so this is what we're talking about you can see this file over here the binary file which usually is an indication of the OLE file format embedded inside these XML file format another thing you should also take note of is when we run this you notice that we don't have the number as the index here uh, you could see something is here we have an alphabet and a number uh, part of the things you want to notice here is that uh, it is possible to have more than one OLE file format in um, an XML uh, document if we do that then OLE dump will process it but in this case it's going to list uh, A for example being the, war, being the first uh, uh, OLE binary that is located let's say we have two uh, uh, OLE binary embedded inside this uh, document then we'll have A and then we'll have all the folders and all the files in, inside these uh, binary and then we'll have another one here that will be B and then we'll have a B1, B2, B3 and so on and so forth that is generally the way these will be processed uh, we can go ahead and uh, examine the content of these uh, string uh, let's go for and generally when I'm looking at these uh, unlike the other ones that we've done in the past before uh, how would I look at the content of this you know particular uh, string uh, it's it's very very important for you to kind of be able to uh, take a look at it I will simply just come over here and I will type uh, you know a3 dash V just like what we often done uh, before and I will dump it out and again we realize it's one of the subroutine that that we found uh, in the past before so you're still pretty much familiar with it the concept I wanted to learn over here is it is possible for us to have more than one OLE even one OLE embedded in, uh, in our document uh, that is XML so let's go on here and change this one to 12 here and let's see we are here right so here we go here we have these which is something you want to kind of remember whenever you have this it means an error it's got an error reading this or late document and I can go to dash s and go to 7 and um, you know you can pipe it through here and you can see uh, potentially uh, some of the information here the you know the runtime uh, routine that is supposed to be here the subtime routine I can actually then go to uh, type the center that I have in your hand, go to dash V and uh, run something through here and you're going to see it's going to say I've got here reading that particular uh, segment that is uh, you know it's got an error reading that that's really what it means however there is a uh, an option that you could just in case you have this in the future uh, Ole has a, a plugin that you could try and use it doesn't always work that might show you on how to uh, decompress a corrupt a, a video file so if you were to run the same file uh, and in this case it's not going to work um, because uh, for some reason this file is actually corrupt beyond what OLE uh, dump can fit. So I'm going to come over here and then uh, come under this session here. I'm going to type uh, dash dash VBA and I'm essentially 
copying this uh, stuff here. Yeah. Initially copying this file and I'm going to press enter and you can still see that it still gives an error message saying it's unable to compress in which case like I told you this is kind of uh, almost a very uh, hopeless case of uh, a situation whereby a file is corrupt beyond uh, something that you know we can repair. Alright, so we're going to go to the next file here now. Uh, let's see what we have here. So we're going to take a look at it, and then we have these two files here. And then the next thing we're going to try and do is run this file, and go ahead and look at our stream here. Let's be. We're going to look at it. And then we can begin to take a look at it, and this is uh, an example of a VB code that is intended to be a downloader. Uh, you can see here the attribute module 1 and then you can see uh, a VB code or micro code that is uh, declaring a function. This is a Windows API URL download to file uh, and what this essentially uh, will do is to call this Windows API to go and get uh, you can see declaration of a string URL as a string and string part as a string and then it's going to go ahead and get this this fetch this page okay and after that is going to download uh, the file into the temp folder you know and then it's going to append that to the index.txt and then you can see set up the URL download to file a uh, string and then set you know specify what the part is going to be uh, and of course is going to execute. This is a very important uh, code for you to understand. So it's very important for us to understand this uh, subroutine. As you can see here, uh, this individual is declaring a uh, string URL as a string and also declaring string part also as a string. Then you can see the string URL providing the uh, argument for it, which is the URL here. And usually this will point to a bad guy's uh, website. And then the part, that's the location where this file is going to be saved, is calling the environment variable and providing it with the argument of uh, a variable of 10. Uh, and then adding, you know, appending the name index.txt, which will allow this file to be saved in a temporary folder uh, with this name index.txt and then it's calling the API URL download profile and providing a way the name uh, the URL part and also uh, the part where the file is going to be saved so this URL to the download profile will download the file by fetching the URL page and then provide saving the part to the um, uh, part you know uh, specified and then another uh, API Windows API which is shell execute will open this particular file uh, at this specified uh, location and you can see this uh, another API here being re you know, uh, referenced, uh, referenced rather. so it's very important for you to see how generally the bad guy leverage these by calling Windows API and you can query for any of these non API to see uh, if the code is doing something it's not supposed to do Alright, so let's go on and do the last file of this uh, segment of uh, a video, or second to the last file, if you call it. That. Uh, and then, what you have here, go ahead and do that, which is 7. Here 
and this is very similar to uh, the same file that we just looked at in the previous example except that in this case however you are looking at a different method of doing the same thing uh, here they are using the ActiveX object method of you know uh, leveraging our, uh, a macro code uh, to obtain a file from the internet download a file and potentially execute the file you can see uh, uh, several variables were declared here you know uh, declare uh, str url as a string and uh, this is to uh, obtain the uh, url of the, of the given url uh, str part as a string which is um, a variable uh, to specify the location and then you know we uh, this after we declared over here we provide you know the value or the strings uh, to this particular uh, string URL here that we declare up here this will fetch this URL once we kind of uh, uh, apply it later and then the string part over here allows us to specify our temporary folder in the environment variable and of course we are appending this index.txt that will attach the name as the name of the file and look here if you look at this uh, msxml2.xmlhtp uh, this is where we are uh, using the activex over here to create an object and we're using this uh, http.open uh, to declare a get command and supplying it with this string URL that's URL uh, of interest to us and then we're also calling uh, this uh, uh, XML HTTP dot send to then go ahead and fetch the page uh, you can see do while uh, is introduced over here uh, for us to more or less uh, wait until this file is fully downloaded and once this file is downloaded is going to uh, get the result of this file and copy it in the area uh, by the uh, area of the memory you know you can see this uh, http.response body that will be the file that we downloaded over here uh, the advantage of this thing is you are not depending on any Windows API to be able to uh, download the file as you can see over here if you look at this code over here don't forget this thing this is the same thing as get command and this is for us to open the URL and this will wait until the file is completely downloaded this will this is the response body and we save the file in the area of bytes in the memory and then you can see over here this statement over here will essentially save the file on disk this is a number to create a file uh, uh, i file numbers over here and then it's going to open the part and save the file as a binary on the system and this will assign the file number you know the file in the area of bytes and then this will close the file so once the file is saved as a binary we'll clean up the object and then once we do that we can go to the next phase here of this step here we create another object as shell application object this object has a shell execute uh, method as you can see in the second line over here and if you look at the method we're going to pass to this shell execute object the part of the file that we saved you know right up here and then it would open it which essentially is something as executing the file so as you can see this will essentially download the file you know save the file as binary execute the file very similar to what we have earlier uh, before there's additional plugins here that I would like to show you here if you uh, let me go over to uh, all right down here this and uh, Gonna go over here to P to see all the plugins. Let me 
see here, but alright, so just show you uh, this plugin over here. Um, as you can see, we have this uh, plugin HTTP heuristics, the PI. And one of the things I could show you here is uh, how to use it. Then I'm going to turn my OLED down over here. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to leverage this file. I'm going to use my plugin for HTTP heuristic.py. And then one of the things I could do here is generally I will come over and specify uh, the files I want to go after. I have these files here. Um, I can go for my 14 files here, this one. And then when I do that, you can see this uh, plugin here essentially pass through this file looking for reference to um, a URL and essentially it's going to pass this out and say oh, I found something over here in the microcode that's trying to look for something and if you find something that it doesn't really understand it's going to actually uh, print something that uh, this is X uh, 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 format that might uh, give me an actual indication of what might be going on um, you know, within the system those are very very valuable uh, information that I think I would like for you guys to kind of uh, uh, go through and review them is uh, very, very, uh, very, very important. One other thing that I forgot to mention in my uh, previous analysis, and I think let me see if I still have the file here. Uh, you can see here I use auto open, right? This is kind of like the, you know the subroutine. An auto open function normally will automatically run this code, but by using underscore, which is uh, Stephen Didier actually wrote this code, uh, uh, by putting this underscore here, ensure that this code is not going to run automatically. Just something I think you should probably take note of. Alright, so this is going to be the last file I'm going to uh, upload here uh, for you guys to watch uh, this week. And then uh, going to be reflected in your final exam that I'm going to be giving you in the class next week. So we have another file here that we're uh, analyzing. Again, as usual, it's got a macro code and then we're going to run through it to kind of view what is in there. And uh, this is uh, quite interesting as you will notice here quickly. Uh, this is the subroutine as you can see. But unlike the previous one, which is a downloader, this is a dropper. It's another technique that is commonly used by the bad guys. Uh, of course, the uh, variables are declared over here, string part are strings, and the IFR number numbers an integer, uh, you know, string payload as a strings, and of course, uh, O shell as an object. So the string part over here is, you know, specify the location of where the file is located. And of course, look at this one, this is the interesting part, that our payload is given to us in base 64. Uh, so, the string part here specifies the location of the file, where the file is going to be, uh, where the file is going to be located. And of course, the string payload is given to us here in base 64. The R file number specifies the file number is going to open the, you know, the part for the you know, for the binary that is saved over here is going to pull the file number into the payload. It's going to save it, you know, um, uh, the file number as a payload, and of course it's going to close it, and it's going to claim the object, clear the object over here, and of course it's going to execute that payload over here. You can see this a little bit more if I want to go into a little bit more uh, detail analysis of these. I can go back into here and pass it into less and if I do that you know you might be able to see where the codes are declared a little bit more shall go back here uh, you can begin to see uh, a couple of declarations one of the things I'm looking for is where we have you know the environment that the file one second here 
You can see where we declare this is what we're looking at earlier. I'm gonna go back up here. to see some of the stuff that we are done over here to specify a variable so if we look at it over here you can see the function that helps to decode it you know uh, base 64 takes it as strings but then it's going to convert it into base 64 a little bit later so that's where the is going to interpret it so if you go down over here and you look at what we have here that's a very very uh, simple for us to uh, to identify again it's important that you don't forget it it's very cool, very simple write the IFR number as free file open the path as binary save it as a payload and then close it clean the object and of course you know when that is done execute it uh, there's a number of ways to actually uh, run this you can go over here if I want to convert to Python uh, to base 64 uh, I'm gonna to have to import uh, a couple of uh, modules which is uh, uh, binary, binary to ASCII okay so I want to import this import binary to ASCII and then the next thing I want to do here is to then after importing this module I can go to binary to ASCII.a2b which is ASCII to binary underscore base 64 and then I have a quote here and I can go over here and copy you know this file if I want to copy the file again this is totally something I could do uh, copy just this file here and then go over here and paste the file close parenthesis over here actually So, and if I press enter here, and I can see that this is just a uh, hello world, alright, but of course in real world is going to be much more advanced than that. So this is going to be the end of this series of this uh, uh, video, there's a little bit less more for us to go, but I'll be posting that video a little bit later uh, uh, in the week, we'll be taking up the rest when we meet in the class next week. Thank you.